So that was like a good uh, <laughs> 15 second infusion. That was the quickest infusion. I actually got a froth it went so quickly. Uh, so this part's now, well these little parts are infused and as you can see, I got equal resin flow on both sides. And then I use this little center area here where I join the two pieces together. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think this will come out fairly, fairly, you know, well done. I don't think it's going to be amazing. Um, it's got little tight radiuses. I did give um, on this back section, it's a 90 degree. So we all know that's going to be a problem. But again, like I said, it's not safety critical. So I'm not stressing about it too much. It's more about just getting the part finished. And I can see I had a little raised lip in here. But I'll keep massaging at it until I get the corner nice and tight. And then, yeah, I added uh, naughtily. I put in a lot more harder than I should uh, on purpose. So I did, usually we do like a 28 to 29% ratio. Over here I did a 38%, so an extra 10%. Just so that I get the part to harden quickly. Um, and I used a medium versus a slow hardener. So, okay, let's see where we end up. But so far, so good. All right. A little bit peeved, but anyway, it is what it is. So I tried a different uh, paint. I tried one of those um, half fill uh, 1K sprays, which said that uh, if you read on the instruction that it's able to work with epoxies, but it's, it didn't really work well. I think it uh, actually came up pretty crappy. So um, traditionally I use 2K, and I'm just going to go back to sticking with my 2K because now the part itself came out fine, but obviously... In between the little micro holes is this white, so I'm gonna have to airbrush it black and then sand it down. It's just extra work I didn't need, but anyway, so trim it out. Here's the back side of it, back side came out pretty perfect, and the other side, the back side came out right. It's just some unnecessary work to get the little bit of it uh, on the inside done, but anyway, let's get cracking and see where we end up. Okay, so these are the laser cut stainless steel brackets that are made up. I had to modify them slightly because of the um, turning radius, a uh, bend radius, but anyway, that's my own silly fault. Uh, I should have known better. Uh, I'm marking them there for the center um, bolt that goes through that holds the flappy paddle system on. And so that's the that's the top half then here's the bottom half so this will go on the back of the steering wheel and this goes on the front of the steering wheel and then we actually tap those two together like that so gonna center it drill it and then we take it from there
Right, so the bracket is now done. And uh, this has been quite a nightmare to install. But it's on now. I've just locked it in place. And uh, yeah, that's a little stainless steel bracket that took us absolutely forever to get mounted properly and to design and to get right. So simple, but uh, yeah, effective, I suppose, is the word we're looking for here. Okay guys, so this is the uh, spare reveal, and so pretty much what I'm doing is I am um, soldering these little sections onto the positives and the negatives, then I join a single wire, and I just encase it in some uh, hot glue, and then uh, that seems to be working quite well. Once this is all finished, we will then obviously seal off all of these edges. guys so give you an idea of the small details and things that we've got to deal with so here is a custom design so this was designed by us um, little spherical bearing and mount oh I can't even focus on it it's got a three mil bore and that goes in there and we use that inside there so now this entire piece that's been designed is specifically designed to allow the spring rate to determine the length and height and um, tension of the paddle so that will go through there go into a steel plate stainless steel plate on the other side and you will tighten this or loosen this to determine how tight you want the um, little spring Guys, you know me, one-handed, how tight you want that spring to be. Okay, guys, so these are the clutch paddles, they're little levers. Um, you can see this was the one which I've taken out, and then this is the other one. I tried something new. I, used some, I took some of the old carbon that we had lying around. Um, that I basically got in a scrap pile. I chopped it up uh, just try and get that like shredded look to it and he has one that's been trimmed already so we've um, finished up kind of here I still obviously got to neat and everything up but just trying to get placement so there is in line with the spring load which I'm going to see if it works now and I'm just going to use one of these uh, momentary switches um, remember it's not a it's not a high-end dosia switch like that's going on here because this is loads I mean this will be used 50 60 times this is going to be used as clutch on and off and there's a toggle switch to adjust it I'll probably install the toggle switch underneath here to adjust it to either left or right um, so Caleb can have the preference of which clutch he wants to use or maybe even wire it up in such a way that he can use both. But I'm not sure how the wiring works yet. Lots of hours in this thing so far. So I'm going to drill that out, put the uh, switch in, check it out. Still got to do some clear coat and every, some finishing up on, on everything there. You can see just some neatening up on, on the casting of resin that we put in here to make things level. That kind of stuff. Um, and I had to print out another... <laughs> another paddle because I built two of them on the opposite so on the right side so yeah <laughs> mistake that I made and a lot of hours and everything else worked perfectly but yeah wrong side doesn't fit so now I'm busy with this so it's a little bit difficult to film and do the work at the same time so I'm just kind of doing the work and then um, uh, filming afterwards so I got our brackets in you can see the little recesses work quite nicely and um, I've got these brass washers that go on the bottom and that will tighten. What I'll do is I'll just trim uh, this bolt 
um, once I've got the piece in, I've got the uh, piece here. So I'm busy putting everything back together now and I need to put the little uh, spaces in so that we can complete the, uh, the little uh, lever. You can see there the pin is in now so that works these uh, go racing are really amazing uh, honestly um, value for money compared to the SPA all that kind of stuff so I'm very happy with it still a little bit of a mess inside there but obviously the fittings and connections are in um, you can see where we've got the um, uh, toggle switch mount or hole uh, to decide if you want left or right clutch lever so yeah so we're slowly coming together now and uh, i'm quite looking forward to getting this particular part behind us and carrying on with the rest of the build okay guys so this is kind of what it uh, looks like now so you get some things on there just cable tied it kind of fasten it down wherever we could um just to try and get it done uh, just doing some of the kind of housekeeping, I suppose. Um, yeah, you know, so if you give you an idea of some of the things that uh, I do, so like, uh, for example, uh, the little heads face in the same direction. So it kind of, I know that when I tighten them, that I left them like that. So at least I keep track of everything there. Um, so now it's going to be assembly and yeah, we're nearly there. So what I did is I just took uh, carbon, I cut it to get the, the V join in the middle or center into the display as I can. And then instead of trying to skin it and go through the, all the angles, I've decided that all I'm going to do is skin the front of it. So all I did is take this, put on a piece of glass, take this with some weight on the back of it. And now I just started trimming the edges. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these edges all out nicely. Okay, the reveal and everything else. Sand it down and then uh, spray paint the edges black and blend it in so that we've got the carbon face with a blue accenting or maybe a black accenting. I'm not sure which one yet. All right, so this is now what it looks like. Um, I scratched it once or twice. I didn't get it quite exactly level. Uh, measured it I'm out by like point something of a mill here and there so still some work to do all right guys so the wheel is pretty much done now I'm waiting for the tech coming to arrive from Europe but outside of that everything else is finished so I'm running you through it so uh, we have our rain light here, we have our uh, uh, mic button over there, Caleb chose the button to be there so that's why we have it. Uh, this adjusts the taco which obviously changes the settings on the lights. We've got our clutch, we've got our gears, um, we've got our power button there. Then if we flip it over and have a look we have our um, down gear over there, paddle for up gear or up shift. Don't want to scratch it. On this side, we have our clutch and we have our selection of left or right. So you choose which clutch you want to run. If we flip it over, you can see the pins in the bottom there. 